In this video, I'm gonna go through the IRS form W-4 as filing single for 2023. Now I'm gonna start off with the paper version, but even if your employer has an online version, you can still use the exact same information to put into the portal. So it's all gonna end up being exactly the same. Now, if you have questions on the IRS Form W-4 that you don't think are answered in this video, you can go ahead and let me know in the comments down below or a more in-depth response, you can go to our Discord channel. Let me go ahead and pull that up really quickly. We have a section specifically for the IRS Form W-4. So if you do have questions, go there and we can answer them or hopefully we can answer them. But before you do, please watch this video in the entirety because most of the questions I get are actually answered in the videos that they're posted under. I just get the feeling that we want the answers right away, so we don't wanna wait, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's go ahead and start with this paper version, and you're going to absolutely wanna use the online estimator, and I'm gonna show you why at the end, but let's go ahead and start with this paper version. So you're just gonna go ahead and enter your basic information, your first name, last name, social security, address, city, state, and zip, pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead and check off single here because that's what this walkthrough is for. Then you're gonna read a bunch of directions and honestly, you can just skip those directions because I really urge you to use the online estimator. And again, you're gonna see why in a minute. So looking at steps three and four, a lot of people look at this and say, well, I don't have any dependents, so I'm just gonna skip it, but don't. Why? Because it's all credits. This section should really be called the tax credit section and not the dependent and child tax credit section because that's exactly what it looks like and a lot of people just overlook it. The reason you wanna make sure that this is accurate is so you can get the biggest paycheck possible to withhold the correct amount. It's not about withholding too much or too little. It's about withholding the correct amount to put the correct amount in your paycheck. And in a lot of instances, if you're looking at step three and you skip the credits, then your paycheck will be smaller as a result. So get the biggest paycheck possible, fill this out correctly. Step four is your deductions. Deductions are things like uh, contributions to your retirement plan. That's gonna reduce your taxable income as long as it's on the traditional side of say your 401k. So that's gonna be your deduction section. So really step three is your credit section. Step four is your deduction section. And then over here on 4C is your extra withholdings. So you can see right here that it says deductions, 4B, and then the extra withholdings on C. That's how you can make basically adjustments. That is what the online estimator will do for you automatically. So you don't even have to do it yourself. You don't have to worry about this. So if you think you're looking at this and saying to yourself, well, I'll just fill at the top and I'll sign at the bottom, that could end up in you getting a refund potentially at the end of the year or having to owe because it has no understanding of what you're currently doing at your current job with your current withholdings. So that's why we need to flip over to the online estimator. And again, I'm gonna say it over and over again because a lot of people ask this question you're gonna see at the end. I'm gonna prove it to you by showing you a paycheck calculator. Now to make this a little bit quicker, I did go through the online estimator already just so I can set it up and we don't have to sit here and fiddle with the numbers. So the first section that you're gonna to go to is you're gonna check off single, you do have a job, and then you're gonna to go to the next section. If you have multiple jobs, just go ahead and hit this plus sign right here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we can have another job or another job or another job, however many jobs, you're going to have for the entire year of 2023. So if you've already had a job but you no longer work there, put it in there because it needs to know the dates you worked there and how much was already withheld in order to make the adjustment to all of your existing jobs or your future jobs too. So every time you get a new job, you have to come back in here and redo the whole thing and make sure it's as accurate as possible. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but that's how you get it accurate and if it's not, then you risk getting either a big refund, a little refund, or having to owe, really just in the dark if you don't take the time to go through this. So just get comfortable with it. It is estimating your entire tax liability. The more information you enter in here, the more accurate it will be. So let's let, take a look at the next section, or let me get rid of these jobs, and we'll jump down to this section right here. So my first job. So right here, I put in that we're getting paid as a salary. Of course, if you're hourly, check that off. We're gonna have this job all year. 
and we're going to get paid every two weeks. And I put that we get $4,000 and we've already made $8,000 for the year. Then it does this little check right here. How much are you going to earn for the year? Yes, $100,000 is accurate. So that's what we're going to go with. If you put a job with specific dates, for example, if you didn't start on January 1st, it will ask you to verify if that's how much you're going to earn, and it will be for 2023. So only make sure that number shows how much you're going to earn in 2023 and not necessarily on an annualized basis. So your annual number for 2023, that is it. And if that's a little confusing, again, let me know in the comments down below. We can help you work that out. But that's what you want to make sure that you're not overstating how much you're going to earn because then you'll end up withholding more than needed. Now you're going to take a look at your most recent pay stub, assuming you have one. And that is very important that it's your most recent one. If it's not recent, wait until you get your next one, then go in here and update your IRS form W-4. Or just go ahead and submit a blank version, wait a pay period, and then resubmit it to make sure it's as accurate as possible. So enter the federal taxes paid per pay period. Again, get that off your pay stub. Year to date number will be on there as well. Put that in there. This will help make the actual adjustment. So this is a very important part if you've already withheld so far this year. Now you're going to scroll down and anything that applies to you, go ahead and check it off. There's question marks next to each one to give you more in-depth understanding of what each section is and the IRS publications to understand more. Of course, again, ask the questions down below and I'll help you work, work through them. So now we're going to take a look at, let me see what I did wrong here. So we have everything there and then we're going to go click next. There we go. The adjustments. We're not going to have any adjustments, but if you do, go ahead and check it off. Like student loan interest deduction. If you're not sure what that is, you want more information, click this uh, little question mark here and it will give you the IRS publication. It will tell you more about what the adjustment is. I'm going to take the standard deduction and that's $13,850. So you saw before that we were earning $100,000. What the standard deduction is, it says, well, we're going to take your $100,000 and subtract $13,850, and it's not going to be taxed as part of the calculation. That is what a deduction does. It reduces your total taxable income, where the credit reduces your tax liability. So if you owed, say, or had a total tax liability, say $5,000, and you had a $1,000 credit, that means you'd only pay $4,000 in total taxes. So credits are more valuable than deductions, but that doesn't really matter. Get both of them. That's going to help reduce your tax liability the most. So we're going to choose the standard deduction, which is what most people will use is the standard deduction. Then we're going to go to the tax credits. I'm going to click next here. Now, this is the section that if anything applies to you, go ahead and fill it out. Like if you bought an EV and you get a tax credit for that. If you have dependents, um, educational um, credits here, American Opportunity Tax Credit, any of these credits, this is where you want to take the time. This is also a great way just to figure out what the credits might be available to you that you didn't know about. Um, so you can just change your spending habits in order to help your taxes. That's basically what this stuff does. So that's tax credits. Then we're going to go to the ending result. And this is where you want to pay close attention. So the expected tax withholding is $6,750. Our anticipated tax obligation is $14,266. So what this means is that if we don't withhold more, that means we're going to end up owing at the end of the year. And in this case, it could be a tax bill of an additional $7,516. Now, before we move on there, the amount of the anticipated tax obligation does not change. No matter what, it doesn't change. Your tax situation is your tax situation. If you withhold throughout the year and you pay those taxes throughout the course of the year, it doesn't change your total tax liability. So this number right here would not change if we withheld more or less throughout the course of the year. What would change is how much we have to pay at the end of the year because we didn't withhold it throughout the year. So there's no tactic here that's going to change your tax liability using the IRS form W-4. What changes your tax liability are the credits and the deductions, not the amount of withholdings, whether or not you're withholding everything or withholding nothing. So if you're thinking, could I file exempt and somehow get out of taxes? No, no, that doesn't get you out of taxes. 
that just basically says you're not going to withhold anything. And in that case, in this instance, we would then have to write a check for $14,266. So whether you pay now or later does not affect that tax liability. However, if you do not withhold, you could receive additional taxes or penalties for failure or to under withhold basically. And if you don't qualify for exempt and you check off with, with exempt, then yes, that's what is going to inevitably happen. So withhold the correct amount and rework your finances to make sure that you're as accurate as possible. And that is what you wanna do. So hopefully that helps. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit further to probably the even more important section. And that is the pre-filled IRS Form W-4. So I always want this slider. I wish they would just take this away. They should just make it zero every time. Everybody should withhold the correct amount and that should be it. That should be that. However, they have a slider. Always bring it to zero because you don't want a refund. Again, it's not gonna do anything for you. Why just give, give the IRS money so they can give it back to you at the end of the year? If you're worried about that, build an emergency fund. That is the answer. So we can go ahead and scroll down here and it's telling us exactly what is going to change. Enter 43 in additional withholdings per paycheck. And you're gonna go ahead and click on this link, this hyperlink for the IRS Form W-4. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna see that they're gonna put $43 in there for extra withholdings per paycheck, per pay period. So I do wanna talk about that. Now, if you're looking at this, you might think that your next paycheck will withhold an additional $43. And that is not true. What it's going to do, it's gonna take this calculation based on your filing status and all the information that you put in there. And it's gonna have a baseline number and then it's gonna adjust it from that baseline, $43. So your current, your current withholdings could be way different than what this form is actually going to make that adjustment. And I know that's kind of hard for some people to wrap their minds around because they might submit this thinking, okay, I'm doing my budgeting and this says just withhold an extra $43. It might be vastly different, but don't fret. If you really want to know what this is, I can help you figure that out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here to our paycheck calculator and I'm using ADP's paycheck calculator. There are tons of these. This one is just well laid out and it looks like it's up to date to me. So that's why I wanted to just show you as the example. It is the exact same information. So we're gonna go ahead and say that we're getting paid. We could say we're getting paid bi-weekly and we're getting $100,000. And then you're gonna go to the federal tax section. And these four boxes right here, one, two, three, four, are these exact boxes right here. One, two, three, and four. So they match up perfectly. That's what they're for. So. If we were to go in here and say, you know, 4C has an extra withholding of $43, that's what we had a second ago, over here, $43. So if I went in over here, additional withholding amount, $43, and we go $43. So if I took that out, you're gonna see that over here, bring up my arrow again, over here, federal income tax, five, uh, $548.48, that is all, all what we're looking at, just the federal income tax withholdings. And if we go here and we add the $43, 43 and hit enter, it's gonna increase it by 43. Um, so it's 591.48. So that's where we're getting that number from. And again, this might not be exactly the same. How would you know? Look at your last pay stub. It's gonna tell you what your last paycheck withholdings was. So if we go back to that online estimator and I go back to here and we scroll down a little bit, what we can see is what was enter federal taxes paid per pay period. We had $250. And I just put that in as an example. But if we flip back over to here, well, we're withholding significantly less. Well, we need to withhold even more. So I put it up to $43 and that brings it up to $591. So that's how that math works. So that's how you can kind of really figure out how much is your paycheck actually gonna be adjusted? It's not by the 43. I think that throws a lot of people off. But this is how you fill out the IRS form W-4. So if you have questions, comments down below, Discord server, even better. And make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.